Today I wanted to discuss about lockdowns, which are a great tool for you to have and use in case of an emergency scenario. If you have a shooter or if you have somebody who's causing an issue in your facility, you can go ahead and lock one or multiple doors and also make it very clear for employees that might not know that something's going on to avoid certain areas. So everything is about not only ease of use, but also visibility. And we'll discuss about how you know, readers turn red and the app and even command lets you know what is happening. So first of all, how do we configure a lockdown? Hopping into command, all we need to do is go into the lockdowns menu. Um, again, lockdowns are per site because they do reference the doors at that particular location and just configure our first lockdown. So I'll say, give it a message. Configure the door or doors I want to be closed and then decide which group or groups of users can trigger lockdowns. And they can do so either via command itself or via the Vercada Pass app. Now, this is where we actually give you some more flexibility in order to decide not only what groups of users can lift the lockdown, because maybe they need to make sure that everything is safe, uh, but also what groups can go through the said doors. So even if the door is marked as closed, even if the reader is red, they are still able to use their cards to get in while the lockdown is enforced. Once I click done, you'll see that not only I have the new lockdown defined, you can define multiple. I get to understand the way that it will work but also I'll get a button here. So I'll press lockdowns. The scenario is presented to me. I can click on it, activate it, and you will see that not only I get presented with the message that we configured previously, but also with a banner. This will appear again in command itself and be present to all the admins or anybody who uses Vercada Pass. Now I'll just go ahead and release it. Now, what other ways we can have to trigger lockdowns? The first one requires us to wire in a panic button into one of the two auxiliary inputs of the controller. So once you do that, you click on your controller, you click add, and you'll actually see the option for an auxiliary input. We'll give it a name. Possibly add a um, context camera to it and select the actual physical port where the button is wired in. Last but not least, we also have to define what is the default state of that button. Usually it's normally open, but just in case things are different, you can switch them from that to normally closed. Clicking next, you'll see that besides the panic button scenario, we do have others as well. One of them is door unlock, which is a way that we can use intercoms to unlock a particular door. And I'll actually build a video just on intercoms and uh, schedule override. So this is quite cool because for example, if you want to make sure that the door is always closed, if a receptionist is not in the area, you can physically mount a button on the desk. And if they step out for a break, for example, they press the button and the door goes from access control to fully locked. They come back again, they press the button and the door switches back to its original state. For our example, I'll just have a panic button and all I need to do is select from the scenarios I have defined on that particular location. But each controller has also the option of two outputs. So what we can do here is that we can hook up some strobes or some, some speakers to it and make sure that in case a lockdown happens, there is uh, audio and visual warning. All I need to do is instead of selecting an aux input, I can trigger a lockdown output, give the name, select the scenario, and also one of the two output ports. But what happens if you don't actually 
have a wired panic button. Uh, you might be using, for example, Verkada alarms and you want to make sure that the building goes into a lockdown if somebody breaks in or if somebody presses the wireless panic button or maybe even uses the console itself to uh, trigger this. All you need to do is to go inside the settings, the workflow of the alarms and in within the alarm responses, you'll actually be able to select the lockdown from the alarm actions. So once the alarm gets triggered, the doors lock, making it very, very hard for the perpetrator to make their way through your premises.